Daniel Comboni. Limone sul Garda, 15th of March, 1831. It's a boy. May God give him a long life. What a joy. A gift from God. The following day, he's baptized Daniel, son of Luigi Comboni and Domenica Pace. Would little boy survive? We're going to miss him, Virgilio. Yes, Mum, but it's fantastic that Daniel, being so clever, can continue studying in Verona. He really studied. He desired to be a priest. He lived in a poor house and he often didn't have enough to eat. He entered the seminary and then San Carlo School, directed by Nicholas Mazza. Daniel, it's yours. I'll pass it. I can't accept this kind of behavior, Daniel. You must devote your energy to higher things. I'll take this into account, Don Nicholas. I thank you for your words. You're reading seriously, Daniel. What's it about? It's about the martyrs of Japan. What a great faith they had. I'd also like to offer my life to spread the gospel. Now that is indeed a worthy cause. Father Matza sent Angelo Vinco to Africa, the first explorer missionary. On his return... Your letters have seduced us, Vinco. I have Africa in my heart and on my mind. If you could only see how thousands of families are destroyed as a result of the horrible slave trade. Daniel is ordained a priest in December of the year 1854. He had volunteered to face a terrible cholera epidemic. Go back to the parish, Don Daniel. You've been hours without resting. You're being the priest, the doctor, the nurse, the gravedigger. Now the Lord wants me. Among the sick. Thank you, Marco. Don't worry about me. We've had eight children, but you're the only one left, Daniel. This is the greatest trial, leaving you so poor. But after a lot of suffering and prayer, God tells me my place is in Africa. I accept this sacrifice. Domenica will be with him in our prayers. Of course, all the time. And you will always know about me through the letters which I will write so lovingly. In mid-1857, Matza sends an expedition of five missionaries to Africa, headed by Juan Beltrame. How I wanted to set sail, though I carry my elderly parents in my heart. It's a long journey, but we will stop over in the Holy Land. Knowing the land of Jesus is something I so long for. We've arrived in Africa. How many adventures to get here? And much more is expecting us, Oliboni. It's wonderful travelling on the White Nile. But it's very dangerous, Del Bosco. And the fevers that can destroy us, as it happened to Vinco. But whatever happens, we'll give our lives for Africa, just as we offered them to the Lord. They were shipwrecked and struggled to get to the Santa Cruz mission. The people welcome them with respect. They dedicate themselves without reserves. Things get worse with the coming of the rain. Most people are ill. Also, Oliboni is seriously sick. I've only been here a few weeks, and I'm going to die. But I am happy, in God's hands. Continue with the good work which we have begun. Yes, Francisco. As you have told us, even if only one remains, we will go on. Mum has died. I had a feeling she had some months ago. So much pain and death, my God. Since you arrived in Khartoum, 
Malaria has already taken another one of us. Melotto. Comboni, you must return to Italy to get better. You are too weak because of the fever. What a failure. Half the expedition is dead. I am willing to sacrifice everything and overcome absolutely anything to fulfill the will of God. The return is long and difficult. The drama of slavery breaks his heart. He liberates as many as he can. We're not afraid of the storm. No, of course not. <laughs> no, of course not. Scared. The storm doesn't frighten us. <laughs> no. <laughs> what does Comboni do while staying in Europe? He does everything he can for Africa and anything connected with Africa. For 60 hours, I've been writing the plan for the regeneration of Africa. It's ready. I received your inspiration, Lord, while praying at the tomb of St. Peter. To sum up, save Africa with Africa. Nothing could be further from Comboni's mind than to establish colonial domination. Pope Pius IX encourages him to proceed. Comboni travels all over Europe, making the objectives of his plan known. Comboni suffers a huge blow when the Matza Institute decides to abandon its missions in Africa. In the midst of contradictions, Comboni discovers the will of God. Now we're about to open a missionary training center for missionaries here in Verona. You can always count on my protection. You are starting a new institution, and your motto is very clear. Yes, Monsignor. Africa or death. Shortly afterwards, in 1867, Comboni once more lands on his beloved African soil with a small expedition. In Cairo, he rents two old houses to welcome slaves, mistreated by slave traders. He wants Africa to be given recognition. He wants Africans to be treated with dignity. The church entrusts him with the heart of Africa, appointing him vicar of the Vicariate of Central Africa. In 1873, going up the Nile and through the desert amid many difficulties, they arrive in Khartoum. He succeeds in getting a group of European nuns to arrive in Africa for the first time. A daring but fruitful adventure. The female institute had humbly been born in Verona. Daniel Comboni speaks many languages. He relates to geographers, explorers, Arab personalities, always in search of the best for the Sudanese people. And in his long journeys through Europe, he meets kings and powerful people, getting them interested in Africa and seeking financial help. Comboni wants neither power nor fame. He's not a hero. He is a humble servant of the Lord with only one passion, Africa. The church appoints him as bishop the first of several in African countries. Let's listen to him at his first Mass in Khartoum. I am back among you, to never again cease being completely yours and consecrated to your greater good forever. Be assured that my soul feels for you a love without limits. First the calamity of drought, endless death and hunger, then torrential rain, a moment of hope, but it's the source of epidemics. Tens of thousands have died, and we missionaries have also been decimated. Lord, you know how much we need to work together. You will provide. He returns to Europe. Defamations, suffering, fever, inner desert, but also help and vocations. He wants to die in Africa. It is the eighth and last crossing of the desert. And in Khartoum, they pay homage to him on his 50th birthday. He visits El Obeid. There, they teach over a hundred boys and girls. He makes an expedition to the Nuba Mountains, where its inhabitants, poor and persecuted, are open to the gospel. The jewel of his vicariate is Malbes, an enthusiastic Christian community led by an African priest. The agriculture project goes on well, and our 30 families pray together daily in the church. I've always had my crosses to bear. I'm happy suffering for you, Lord Jesus, and for the most abandoned. Even though I die, the work will not die. Daniel Comboni gives his life for Africa in Khartoum on the 10th of October, 1881. Today, 
The Komboni family dedicates its life to the African cause. And to other Africas, where humanity suffers oppression, violence and slavery.